Hi everyone, happy Sunday and welcome to my kitchen. Let me know in the comments where you're tuning in from because it's always interesting to see everyone joining from all around the world. I'm hoping that this sort of time works well for lots of you because um, we are, I am in Western Australia. So today I have gone out into the garden and I've picked a whole bunch of things and I'm going to show you what I have managed to find out there. And then we are going to make a really easy and delicious salad, as well as one of my favorite salad dressings, which we're going to mix up a little bit. We're, going to, we're not going to keep it the same. Um, I always like to do an experiment. So we're going to do that today um, and see what we can make. Um, so I've got some edible flowers and the base of the salad is going to be kale because that is what I have a lot of at the moment. So you could switch this up and use lettuce or whatever you have available. That's what I like to do is pick what I have and then sort of use, make a recipe up using what I have. But it is good to have these base recipes up your sleeve so that you can sort of build on that. So let me know in the comments if you've got any questions. But yeah, thanks for joining me on the Sunday morning or Saturday or wherever you are. It's always interesting to see. All right, so I also wanted to show you this kale. This is um, how I've been harvesting my kale. And it is spring now here and kale will start to go to flower and also you'll start to get a lot more bugs um, now that it's warming up so throughout winter I'll harvest kale just by picking off the outer leaves and then when we get to this sort of time of year I like to just cut sort of the main branch off and leave it still growing in the ground with a few leaves on and then it will send off lots of side shoots so you can see this is one that I've cut off previously um, you probably can't see, but in the middle there is where I cut the main stem. And since then, it's now sent off like one, two, three, four, five. There's like five or six side branches that have now produced a whole lot more kale. And I can just harvest these young kale leaves, which are going to be so good for the salad because they're a little bit softer. This kale that I've got is the Tuscan kale and it's kind of the only one I like to grow now. Kale's really great to start growing because it is such an easy plant, but it's not my favorite, but I quite like this one. And the thing that I love about it is that it's got all these um, sort of like, what are they, ridges, patterns, indents. And so when we put our salad dressing in here, it goes, if you make it right, like how are we going to do it today? It gets into all of these little cracks and then your salad is a lot more tasty. So that is one of the great things about kale is that it's really good for holding that flavor. So let me know what you think about kale, um, if you're growing any. The other one I like to grow is the... The purple, oh, I can't think of what it's called. It's like got the purple stem. I'm not a big fan of the curly kales. I just don't really like the texture of them. Well, they, they're good for chips, though, if you want to make chips in the oven. Um, all right, so we've got kale. We've got a white beetroot. So I'm going to take these leaves off, and I'll use these probably – um, in a stir fry tonight for dinner, but the, we'll put a little bit of the fresh beetroot in the salad and then the rest we'll use later. Uh, so we got this. This is one of my favorite salad ingredients actually. And this is fennel fronds. So it is a baby snail. No, thanks. So, yeah, I love, I always put a little bit of this fennel frond on the top of my salads and 
it has sort of like a licorice flavor and I don't even like licorice but I don't know I like fennel so it's really good with sort of citrus notes so if we are going to do a sort of citrus based dressing so this is going to go really well with that and the fennel bulbs sort of produce over the cooler months and then now that it's warming up it'll produce a lot more of these fronds so yeah I always chuck these in my salads or I make a pesto fennel from pesto um, and I do have a recipe for that on my website if you want to find that um, so we've got our fennel fronds a lonely onion this is like a red bunching onion so it's sort of like a spring onion so this will be really good in salad as well it's going to flower, um, but we can use, still use this. It will be delicious. And this. This is actually my favorite salad ingredient at the moment. I have been using this every day, and I have to try and keep a few so that they go to seed. Um, but this is an onion flower. So... A lot of my onions are, you know, huge now and they've gone to flower and I'm just going to let them go for seed. But I'm also eating the flowers. <laughs> so I probably won't have much seed. But um, they have a little, like, closed buds and then they open up into a flower. And they have a really delicious onion flavor, but it's quite mild and a little bit sweet. Um, so it's really nice raw in a salad or on anything, really. You could put this on pizza or whatever you wanted. It's it's just a really nice subtle flavor. Um, and they look really pretty as well. So we just pick some of these off and we'll pop these in our salad. Um, of course, we've got nasturtiums. So these are wild in my garden, probably in your gardens as well. Um, it is definitely the season for nasturtium. So I've got a few nasturtium leaves, not too many because I don't want it to be overpowering. Um, and I picked the young ones because uh, they're a little bit softer and um, not as peppery. And what else have we got here? Oh, obviously a whole lot of little nasturtium flowers. And I'm really excited this year. I have interesting colors. Normally I just have like the orange and the yellow and the, you know, the classic nasturtium flowers. But this year I've been getting a whole lot of different colors. So I'm not sure why. Um, they probably are all cross pollinating. So if you watched my last video, you'll know about that. But this is a red and yellow one. Then I've got lots of these really deep red. That one's not as deep, like some of them are quite dark. And I've been loving using these in salads. I don't know, they just look really beautiful. And look at this one, it's like a peachy color. What else have we got? Yeah, and then like, oh, this one's a little bit past its best now, but like, it's, I don't know what color that is. It's sort of like a strawberry color. So, yeah, I'm really happy with that. I'm gonna harvest heaps of these and I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm looking at them now, I can see them on my back fence and I have hundreds of them. And if you let all of those flowers go to seed, I'm going to have thousands more nasturtiums each year. So I do try and harvest heaps of those flowers. And so I might make, like you can make vinaigrettes and all sorts of things, but I wanna do something new, an experiment. So we'll see. Just seeing who's in the chat. Oh, there's so many. People from different places, Saturday night. <laughs> Thanks for joining me on a Saturday night. That's awesome. Um, all right, so we still have a few more flowers to go through. And I'll just do a recap. If you are just joining in now, I'll do a recap of everything before while we're cutting it up. But we've got calendula. So these beautiful orange flowers. Um sort of yellow and orange I've got at the moment. And we're gonna pop these in the salad. Some pansies. They're getting eaten, so they're like a little bit odd shaped. I've got these tiny little miniature snails at the moment. Um, 
this is a new one. I haven't actually even planted this, but it was quite big. So I was like, I may as well harvest a little bit. So this is a apple mint. So I was given this the other day by my friends and it is a yeah, variegated mint with like a subtle apple flavor. So this is gonna go in my tea garden slash cocktail garden <laughs> where I have a few different types of mint and some lemon verbena and a few other things. So that is in sort of a container. So my mint is all contained in there. Um, this one is gonna go in there. So we've got some mint and I think this is the last one. Yeah, I think I have got a, no, actually I've got a few other things to sh show you. So these are mini chrysanthemums and they look like little daisies. So, so good for decorating, making things look pretty because that's part of it. I love to make my food look really interesting and look amazing. And I think just putting a few edible flowers on there does that. And it's so easy, really like you don't have to be an artist. You can make things look good with these beautiful ingredients. So I'm so excited about this, you guys. This is my first, I think this is my first time growing ginger. So we have some ginger from the garden, which I'm so excited about because I love cooking a lot of Asian flavors and, um, a lot of like I, I have to have sauce and dressing on everything so ginger is going to be such a great thing to have in my garden I have saved quite a bit of it um, but I'm also going to replant a lot of it because I want a lot more ginger so I've got ginger now in a few different places to really try and get next year's production up to a lot more and I can freeze some of this as well so um, to make it last a little bit longer so I might put a little bit of this in the dressing, which I've never done before, but you know, we like to wing things. We like to experiment, to try new flavors and see what happens. So what else have we got? Oh, so lemon, which is gonna be part of our dressing. Kind of had an issue with that <laughs> this morning. I was like, oh, I'd go out to the garden, get all my ingredients and I'll get a lemon off the tree. And there's no lemons on the tree. So, I luckily I had a my because I've been making this versions of the salad like for the last few weeks so I've been using a lots of lemons so I do have a, um, a wedge of lemon left over from the night before so we've got probably enough lemon just so I'm going to be careful with that um, because yeah I don't have any lemons on the tree there's lemons on the tree they're just not they're just green so we can't use them. Um, All right, okay, so let's get started. Let's make this salad. So what I'm gonna do is chop it up. And this is like something that I think you all have to do with salads. I never used to do this and this has elevated my salads to like the next level. So this is probably my number one tip for making salad. And that is make it in a mixing bowl and that way we can really mix it in and get all of those dressing flavors in to all the little cracks. So especially with this kale, which is the base of our salad, having all of those little cracks, we're going to really massage that dressing in using this bowl. And then we can plate it up and we'll make it look pretty on one of these dishes. You can help me decide which dish we'll put it in. And then I will keep this bowl. I won't wash it out. And I'll just, when I've finished, if I've served the salad, which I'm not actually gonna serve the salad because it's 9.30 in the morning. <laughs> so the salad is gonna be for my lunch and my dinner. So I'm gonna pop it back into this bowl and it has a lid so I can secure it in here and it'll keep really nice and fresh in the fridge. Um, and I have a few different sizes bowls. So if I'm not making, if I'm making a little salad, I'll use this one. So that is my number one tip is Make your salads in a mixing bowl so that you can really get those flavors in. And then you can put them in a serving dish or serving bowl. And we'll put the flowers on last so that they don't get bruised in here. So and we've got a few other things that we're gonna put on the salad, but we'll go through that when we do it. 
also super random, but I picked a white mulberry. My white mulberry is starting to fruit. Heaps of mulberries on it. They're just not quite ready yet. All right, so I don't know if you can see, it's quite hard to get angles in my kitchen. It's not, should have designed this for YouTube when I was making it, but it's okay. So I'm just gonna put all my flowers to the side because we're going to use those at the end because they're very delicate and they bruise easily. So we won't be chucking them in just yet. Let me know what your favorite ingredient is for salads at the moment. What are you using? Um, because I'm always looking at making new additions to my salads. I get like so excited because I make something and I'm like, I get stuck on it. So we try and mix it up. So I'm going to cut these into, I'm going to not use the real hard stems. Um, I've just got a, a bowl here that I'm putting all the odd bits in and then I can chuck that in the compost. Um, so I'm probably going to do pieces about this size, you know, two centimeters or something. Nice and small. So, um, and I had to go through and like make sure there was no caterpillars in these. So fingers crossed that the caterpillars aren't on the menu today. Um, these little cracks and crevices are perfect for hiding critters. So. No one wants to be eating that. The other thing I've been using kale a lot in is uh, smoothies. So if I pick too much, I'll just pop them in bags and um, in the freezer and then chuck them in smoothies because it's warming up now here in Perth, so it's definitely getting into smoothie season. And I realized I had a whole bag of guavas in the freezer, which from last year, um, frozen guavas. So I need to make something with those. Maybe some guava jelly, guava jam. They do have quite um, decent seeds in them. They are a little bit tricky. It's gone all quiet now. Before, just before I was about to go live, there was a all these crows yelling at each other outside, and I was like, "Oh, that's great." just before I'm about to go live, but they've disappeared. And now I kind of miss them. might stick some of the um, beetroot leaves in as well, just the like the youngest ones out of that. Put a few of those in just to mix it up. And then there probably won't be much longer. I'll be, I'll probably get rid of most of my kale soon because um, we are getting a lot of green caterpillars, a lot of aphids. Now that the weather's warming up, the bugs are out. And I just, it's just something that I, I just don't like fighting with it. So it's just not worth it for me. Most of the time, if it's, I'll stop growing all my brassicas and stuff. As soon as the weather warms up, I, you know, just 
just take them out, use them, and then I'll use that space for something else rather than trying to like constantly be fighting and picking all the bugs off. And I don't know, that's just how I like to do it anyway. I don't have a huge space, so my space is valuable. I like to make the most out of it. Sometimes I will keep a kale in like a shady area over summer and just keep one sort of kale and that way it's already established come winter so I'll have you know kale ready to go all right so maybe just a little bit of these younger leaves and just chop them up really fine I was in there so this is our big bowl here at the moment. We've got all our kale, nasturtiums chopped up, and some of the baby beet leaves. And I'm just going to put this one in as well. So this is the um, red bunching onion, which is similar to a spring onion. So I love growing these because they sort of just bunch out from one and you get heaps of them. They're really easy to grow. And also, like, I find it's a really good amount for each meal. Like, I can just use one of these up, whereas, like, with onions, you got to cut them and put them in the fridge and then remember that they're in there. <laughs> Chop that up nice and fine. Most of these aren't that fine. All right, so we've got all our leaves in here. Now we need to make the dressing so that we can massage it in and get it nice. Oh, there's a little onion flour. Lots of flavor. So I'm going to make my dressing in here just because I love using this. <laughs> so one of my favorite things to do is make little concoctions using um, my mortar and pestle. I don't know. Just love it. So... For this dressing, the base of it is basically just three ingredients. So these three ingredients, I use the salad dressing all the time, and then I'll just add in little bits here and there each time to make it a little bit different. So um, the three ingredients for this dressing is lemon juice, um, olive oil, and maple syrup or honey. So some sort of sweetener. Um, I mix it up. I use honey or maple syrup just depending on what I have at the time. Um, I have been loving using maple syrup though. I don't know, it's just, so we're gonna do that today. So because we only have a limited amount of lemon, I'm gonna put all the lemon in here, the olive oil, probably even amounts, a tablespoon of each. And then we're just going to, normally I would chuck in even amounts of all, like a tablespoon of lemon, a tablespoon of olive oil and a tablespoon of honey or maple syrup, but, Sometimes that can be too sweet, and then I'll add in more lemon, but I can't add in more lemon. So we're going to be cautious about the sweetener, and then we can always add more um, as we go. So juicy thing. It's going to be kind of hard to juice this because it's a wedge, but I'm just going to do it straight into this. Thing. See how much juice we can get out of it. Lime would also be really good for this. I do have a lime tree, but there's no limes on that either. <laughs> there's lots and lots of flowers and baby limes. Um, just not many, many limes. Seed. Oh. Okay, so I'll see how much I've got in here. Yeah, so we've got about a tablespoon in there, which is good. And then we'll do a tablespoon of olive oil. Normally I don't mix this, I measure this, I just wing it, but 
just for you. I will try and keep some sort of measurement. So maple syrup, I'm just going to do one teaspoon to start with, and then we'll taste it. Spoon. right yeah I don't want to put too much more sweetness in because I've just got a little bit of the lemon I'm gonna add a little bit more I just I can't add any more lemon so we're gonna keep it like that just taste it and to your liking like if you like quite a sweet dressing or if you like more of a sour dressing probably a probably could do a little bit more just a tiny, I like things a little bit sweet, so we'll just do that. Then what I'm going to do, add a little bit of seasoning. So we've got some salt and some chili flakes. So I'm just going to add a pinch of salt. And again, a pinch of chili flakes. And now the experiment, we're going to add some ginger, just a little bit of ginger to the dressing. Um, I haven't done that before, but, you know, we are here to try new flavors. And I put ginger in everything else. So let's put it in this. Just going to peel a little bit off. So chuck that in. And then we're going to chuck in our apple mint. So we've got a little sprig of apple mint. Oh. That's going in. So it's going to be really fresh and vibrant. We've got our lemon. We've got mint. We've got chili. We've got ginger. Oh, stop doing that. And yeah. So now I'm just going to crush it up just to mix it all together. Crush up that ginger and that mint. This is my favorite part. Oh, thanks, Fanatic Forager, for your soup chat. I really appreciate that. I need to get into, I'll get back into this chat in a minute once we get this dressed. Oh, this smells so good. I wish you could smell this. Needs a little bit more salt. Probably could even do a little bit more chili. Let's make it nice and spicy. I'll try not to tip it out. Oh, this is going to be hard. Let's just do this. All right. So this is our dressing. And now let's put it in the salad. So in it goes. On goes the lid. Make sure it's secure so I'm not throwing salad dressing all around the kitchen. And then we're able to shake it. Always toss the salad. That's the new rule. All right. So because this kale's got so many cracks and crevices, I'm just going to massage it in a little bit with my hands. And that will really get that flavor in there. Mm. 
so even though this is just a simple kale salad, I mean, it, there's not a lot else in here. We've got a few other things we're going to throw in, but um, just having a really nice dressing makes such a difference to any garden salad. Tita. All right, so that's the base of our salad, ready to go. Which bowl should we use? This one, which is like a big, this is one of my main salad bowls. Or I also use, I like to use like a flat dish. So what do you reckon? Let me know in the comments which one I should choose to build this salad on. All right, so we're gonna prep one more thing, which I didn't go through, which is I put on all of my salads. So this is another one of my salad tips is I like to put seeds and nuts in all of my salads. I think it adds a really good texture. It's added protein. It's got healthy fats in there for you. So we're going to just toast a few off. While we chop up everything else and get it plated. So the seeds that I'm going to use are pumpkin. I've just got pumpkin and sunflower all mixed in here. Um, and I use these in my smoothies and we go through a lot of these for salads. So just put a handful or more. I don't know, two tablespoons-ish. And just dry roast those until um, they start to go a little bit golden and then we can chuck them on the salad at the end. So I'm just going to chop this up, put a little bit of this in. This is a white beetroot. So the white beetroots are sweet. They don't have that real earthy flavor that normal red beetroots have, um, which is kind of why I prefer them. I'm not a big red beetroot fan, unless it's like pickled. I don't like the real earthy flavors of the red beetroot. I love the white beetroot. The um, candy cane strut is another one of my favorites. So we've just got a mandolin here. Um, this will help us cut real even thin slices. This is another one of my must haves for the kitchen. These two, I think are my favorite items in the kitchen. I use them for just about every meal. So now we have some really nice, some of them are really thin, like look how it's like peeled basically because beetroot can be quite strong. So having um, really thin pieces and I'm just going to cut them up a little bit more. Rough. It's nothing fancy. Chuck them in. Mix them around so they get lots of that dressing on them as well. All right, so what bowl are we using? Oh, is that even or is it the white bowl? One, two. There's three for the white bowl. Okay, well, that's what we're going with. Bowl. pull some of these um, beetroots out onto the top so you can see them. Now we just chuck everything else on top. So we have got our fennel fronds. So just pick off some of those, throw them on. You don't want to use that main stem. So just pick off the sort of side branches. And that will give it a really nice sort of herby um, flavor as well as the licorice kind of thing. So now we will stick on the flowers. So we put these on last because they are really delicate and they can bruise easily. So we're just going to pick off the calendula and then sprinkle. 
so it's easier to do with dry fingers. My hands are covered in dressing. And don't burn the nuts. See, seeds. I can see they're starting to go a little bit golden, so they're just about ready. And then we're going to, I mean, you could put nasturtiums whole, but I like to take the peels off. Um, it's a lot nicer to eat that way. So then just put them around the plate. Some of the red ones. See, like, you guys, it's so easy to make things look beautiful with just some edible flowers. It's why I'm the biggest advocate for edible flowers in the garden. They have so many uses. They bring pollinators to the garden. They add diversity. You can eat them. They look pretty. And they have lots of nutrients and antioxidants. Like, these calendula are really good for you. Um, they have anti-inflammatory properties. So I'm also drying a bunch of these because I'm going to try and make my own skincare with the calendula. So that's a bit exciting to branch out into some more uses with them from the garden. All right, so that's probably enough flowers. I mean, I've still got lots of flowers, but it might be a bit overcool with the flowers. These are our onion flowers. So I'm just, all I do is I'll just um, break off some and sprinkle them on top. Those are probably done. So that's an extra little onion flavor, but not too intense. And yeah, now just our seeds. We would let these cool down a little bit, but they're not too hot. All right, that's it. Look at this beautiful creation we have made. This smells amazing, you guys. The, it is so fresh and vibrant. The lemon and the ginger and the onion flowers, like these onion flowers, are, they make the salad. Look at that. They're like little, oh, they're so good. So yeah, let me know if you've got any questions, but that is our easy salad. So then all I can do is I'll chuck it back in this bowl, which still has heaps of like leftover dressing in there um, because I'm not going to eat this right now. So I'll pop it back in the bowl, in the fridge. Then I'll have that for lunch and dinner probably as well um, in a wrap. I'll probably serve some, some grilled halloumi would be delicious on this. Or you can serve this with a barbecue. Like this would be a really good um, dish to serve with a summer barbecue and you can swap out the kale for lettuce and whatever flowers you've got in the garden that's why, why it's so good because every time you make this it's going to look different because you're just going to use what's fresh and what's available in the garden and hopefully you have more than a quarter of a lemon i also have these which i could put in it these are sunrise limes so they're similar to a kumquat um i actually am going to put a few of those in there I don't, this is not from my own tree. I have a few things similar to this and a, the kumquat is similar to this. Um, but if you like don't, some people don't like fruit in their salads, but I love fruit in my salads. So these are, you can eat the whole thing. Well, there's so much flavor. They're quite sour. Um, yeah, I don't know. Sunrise lime, similar to a um, 
haven't got. There you go. Some people might be mad about that, fruit in a salad, but I'm all for it. Thank you all for joining in. I'll have a see if I've, um, let's answer a few questions. Oh, it's so good to see so many people joining in from different parts of the world. Pear or apple in a salad, are you a fruit person or not? It's Some people are so for or against it. Um, I'm definitely for it. I put fruit in everything. Pear. Pear is really good in a salad. I do love a pear in a salad. Pear and walnut, that is a good combo. I do that all the time. What are you guys up to for the rest of the day? I am going to be in the garden. This afternoon, I am going to film. So even though it's Sunday, there's no days off here. I'm going to film this afternoon another video because while the weather is good, I need to make most of that. Calendula and olive oil. That sounds great. I need, I'm going to do that. I've got um, a, a little container of calendula. I've just been collecting little bits at a time. Um, and um, so that I can, so I'll probably, these leftover calendulas, I'll dry them out as well and add that to my dried calendula mix. So then I can infuse that into an oil and then make a balm or something like that out of that. Um, but yeah, just trying to pick as many of these flowers as, as I can at the moment, because the more you pick, the more they're going to produce. And with the weather starting to warm up, some of these um, winter flowers will start to die off, like the pansies and um, the nasturtiums will get too hot soon and they'll all die off. So I really need to harness as much of those as I can and um, yeah, do a few more experiments. So thank you so much for joining me today. I will let you know when there's another live. I don't know what I'll do next. Try and mix it up. Keep it some cooking, some gardening. You can see this is from my um, last live, so those seeds that we planted. Those are the sunflower seeds and some random other ones we chucked in there. And I have taken the other ones outside for the day. I'm taking them out into the undercover area. So there's like a warm sort of greenhouse vibe for them during the day. But in, at night, they're inside still. And yeah, I have lots of gardening things to do today. I'm basically going to spend the whole day in the gardening, in the garden, getting some stuff done, getting some filming done, and planting all the seeds. It's seed planting month, October. Plant all the seeds. Basically, every day I'm planting seeds, whether that's direct sowing or in containers. I'm just trying to get everything ready to go because I'm also behind. I haven't been planting for the last few months. Wood chipping our veggie patch today. It is. I'm so glad you got some sun over there as well. We've been having some really good weather. Poor New South Wales. <laughs> They're still getting some rain. Weekly food, food prep. Yep, Sunday's a great day to do your food prep. I mean, make a big-ass salad. Chuck it in, I mean, chuck it in a bowl. Put it in containers. Good to go. Kind of feel bad tipping out this beautiful salad. But still tastes good. All right. Well, that's me for the day. Thanks, you guys, for all for joining me and joining in the chat. It's so nice to um, be able to catch up with you rather than just be... Um, posting videos without being able to interact. I love the lives. I'm going to keep doing them. I'd love to have a regular one, but I'm my schedule's always different. Like sometimes I'm away for weekends, so I can't do it every weekend. So we're just going to keep it random um, and just make sure you hit notifications when you see those lives come up so that you can get a reminder of when it is live and also the time zone because we are in different time zones. That really does help work that out. But enjoy your day in the garden. I'll catch you guys next time.